Ready, I got a very important thing to do today and you're making me late and I'm I've done plenty of readings in interesting places but I've never been asked to do a group reading at a baby shower before. You're celebrating the life of a baby. Yeah. By talking to dead people. Do I have this right? Yeah. My son was giving me such a hard time of, Ma, who's going to want to hear from their dead relatives at a baby shower? Like, surprise. Is your grandma dead? You know what it is? My son's never been to a baby shower on how friggin' boring they are. <laughs> I'm Devin Martinez from Brooklyn. I'm Callie Martinez from Brooklyn, and we got read at my cousin's baby shower. So we're expecting to be at a typical baby shower where you play these games and, you know, open gifts. But we have one more surprise for you. But we never, ever expected anything like Teresa. Teresa Caputo. Hi, how are Hi. you? I didn't know, honestly, who Teresa was. Kellyanne knew who Teresa was, so the minute she heard Teresa's name, she got very excited. Who would think to come to a baby shower to connect with their loved ones? <laughs> that have died. She first went to my niece because it was her baby shower, and, you know, we were just listening. You're gonna name the baby after your dad if it's a boy? They just assumed that the mother-to-be was going to be the spirit hog that afternoon. <laughs> And all of a sudden, Teresa, her whole body shifted. Oh, Ma, is your grandmother also departed? And she pointed at us and she said, you're connected, who are you? Because they want me to go to her. But Spirit, they proved that everyone received a message that needed to hear something from their loved ones. So did your grandmother have Alzheimer's? My grandma was the best person in the entire world to me. I used to come home from school and I would just run to her and tell her everything about my day. She was like Kellyanne's best friend because she was almost like a child herself. Do you, would you always draw things for her? <laughs> and I used to draw, I drew a rainbow for her. She goes, come look at all the beautiful things that my granddaughter made for me. And she brings me to a room and there's all like children drawings. I drew like all these like little kids, like stick figures. Kellyanne was her world and she was Kellyanne's world. Do you like to sing or something? Because she goes, she's a very good singer. <laughs> and she, she's a brag at your mother. She's pulling out the brag book and she's showing me everything. She kept coming back to us. She'd leave and then come back to us. And we were all like mesmerized. Did she live with you? Because she shows me that you always sat with her and you would talk to her <laughs> as if there was nothing wrong. I think because she was so young, it, it didn't matter to her. You know, that was her best friend, and it didn't matter that she was different than we were. You know, she didn't have an understanding that she was sick. She was just my grandma. Your grandmother says, I want you to remember, she says, when, of how much joy you brought me when you would come home and you would sit with me and tell me all about your day and tell me about all the things that you love to do. She says, I heard you. I honestly didn't know how much joy she got out of that. I knew how much fun it was for me and I knew how much I enjoyed it, but I didn't know how much she did. I mean, I would always see her smiling. I never really knew. She says, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for treating me as if I wasn't sick. I was in sixth grade, and I was just starting middle school, just starting that whole like new sense and everything. It was at a very important time for me. It was a rough time for Kellyanne, and I think my mom probably knew she really needed to know that she was there for her, even though not physically anymore. You still sense and feel your grandmother? So know that that's real. You're not crazy. It's not wishful thinking, and know that that's a beautiful connection and bond that you share with your grandmother. And I always sense her near me. It's a very awesome, comforting feeling because I know she's still there. It's not like she's really gone. I mean, she's not physically here, obviously. If I could give her a hug, I would, but I can't. But she's still here. It, it definitely gave, gave me some peace to have the reading done and have my, my mom come through because, you know, my mom was sick at the end. So to have her come through Teresa, the mom that I remembered, you know, 30 years ago, hearing Teresa say that she was happy and that she, you know, was so grateful for the time that she had with us, really to me was a gift. I want to wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome.
then when I get back to school, like the day after it airs, I get pulled aside by everybody like, you were on the friggin' Long Island Medium, are you kidding me? You didn't tell me. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. God bless. Bye-bye. I think that was the first baby shower I've been to, ever. It'd probably be a disappointment if I went to other ones now.